For this video, I'll be walking you through how to create custom tabs with accessibility built in, sharing with you tips on HTML accessibility tag attributes, CSS tricks on styling and handling keyboard interaction with JavaScript. I have here the HTML for my tabs component. It is composed of a tab header and three tab panels where I put content for each tab. In the tab header, I have three buttons for each tab. To make it accessible to the users that rely on screen readers to navigate your site, the work needs to start on the HTML level. On the tab header, I have the role of tab list, which will tell screen readers that this is tabs container, along with an area labeled attribute, which will describe this tabs content. So if these tabs are about music genre, for example, I would say music genre, and each tab name would be after music genre. For each tab, I have the role of tab and I set area selected attribute, which will tell screen readers if it is selected or not. And by default, the first one is. I also set tab index of zero on the selected one to force tab navigation to stop here on the first tab and negative one for the rest of them to signal that they should be ignored. You can also find implementations where all of them are set to negative one. Now for each tab panel, I gave role of tab panel and all of them have tab index of zero. Notice that I added attribute of hidden to all but the first tab panel. This is one of the attributes I'll be manipulating and I prefer this over setting display none on the CSS because it is more obvious that this element is not meant to be shown. So the way tabs are supposed to work for screen readers is that a tab is selected and when they press the tab key, the tab panel is focused on so they can read its content. Then when they press the next key, the next tab is highlighted. Then they press tab key again and the corresponding tab panel is focused on and so on. On CSS side, I have a simple body styling to center everything. And this is why the tabs are centered on the right panel here. I box size border box everything and I also set a simple staff for all paragraph. I like removing top margin of every paragraph and H tags on my pages. Then I have a simple style for the tabs to set it 400 pixels wide. The tab header is display flex, so tabs align horizontally. Then a simple style for each tab buttons with transition on the color because I changed the color for the tab with area selected of true. And this is because I'll be manipulating this area selected attribute as the navigation happens. Finally, a very basic style for the tab panels. And the reason I'm setting outline to none here and on the tabs is because they will receive focus and I don't like the outline browsers normally add to elements with focus. But you can simply leave them on as they also help improve the experience since they make it more obvious of which element you are currently interacting with. Most of the work will happen on the JavaScript side, so I'll start by selecting the tabs and then I'll use this children to grab the other elements. I know the first child is the tab adder. I'll use the JavaScript destructuring to name them. Then the rest are just tab panels. So I'll spread it here and all this will do is create an array with all the remaining children, which will be the tab panels. I'll track the active tab, which will be the first child on the tab header and the active tab panel, which will be the first item on this tab panel array. So the logic I am basing all this is that the tab and the tab panel are connected by the order they appear. So first tab belongs to the first tab panel and so forth. I have seen implementations where they are connected by ID. So if that's your case, change this implementation accordingly. The reason I don't go with the ID is that if this was a React or a web component, for example, and we use this multiple times in a page, it will violate the ID rule that an ID should be unique per page and eventually introduce bugs when you try to query for the ID if you don't do it right. Now I'll add a nice tab indicator. Consider this a bonus feature. I'll simply create a span element with a class of active tab indicator and I'll append it to the tab header for now. Back on the CSS, I'll add a style for it. So I'll display it inline blocks since span tags are inline elements, which means width and height will not work on them. Make it 100 pixels wide for now so we can see it. Two pixels high, a nice blue background, absolute position in left bottom. Round this corner by one pixels and Z index one higher than the other elements so it appears on top. Finally, give it a left transition since I'll be changing that. I could also transition the width to make it nicer but leaving it out for this implementation. I'll remove the width and continue on the JavaScript side. I'll first create a function I'll use to activate a tab and call it activate tab. 
and it takes a tab to make it active. I'll call it here with the active tab to initialize the active tab on load. Inside I set the current active tab area selected attribute to false and the one pass to true and then the tab pass becomes the active tab. I'll proceed to giving it focus and resize the active tab indicator to match the tab width and left shift it using the active tab offset left. Offset left is how far an element is from the left side of its parent offset. So it's perfect for this job. And like that, we see our active tab indicator. Now with this function in place, I'll go over each tab using tab header children spread here because children is a list, but not an array. So we'll now have the cool array methods like for each, which I'll use here to call the activate tab function when the tab is clicked on. Now, if I click on the tabs, it should change and the active indicator should move nicely. To also change the panels, I'll need to pass the index of this tab since this implementation depends on it. So if the first tab is active, the first panel should show and so forth. On the activate tab, I'll first set active panel hidden attribute to true to hide it. Then use the tab index to grab the tab panel and remove the hidden attribute and then make it the active panel. Like that, the tab panel for the tab should show or hide when we click on the tabs. So far, this does not make it 100% accessible for screen readers. And for that, we need to listen to key down events on tabs. And you listen on a tab, so if it is removed, the listeners are also removed. Inside, I'll first determine the index of the current active tab. I could also have a variable that I change every time activate tab function is called much like I am changing the active tab and active panel to make this whole thing much simpler. But this is a nice opportunity to share with you more cool stuff about JavaScript and DOM. I'll first change the tabs header children to an array using array from, and from that I'll call index off with the active tab. Now I'll listen to two key codes. 39 is the right key and 37 is the left key on the keyboard. For the right key, I'll first check if there is a tab after the active tab. And if so, I'll call activate tab with the next element sibling and the index plus one. Otherwise, I'll call activate tab with the first tab and index of zero. So if we reach the end, we start from the beginning. For the left key, I'll do similar, but check for the previous element sibling and call activate tab with that and index minus one. Also grab the last index using tab header children length minus one, then call activate tab with the last element and last index. So if we reach the beginning, we continue from the end. There are other key codes you should listen to, but I won't show because it is pretty much the same process. They are the home and end keyboard keys. On home key press, which has the code of 36, you should always select the first tab. And on the end key press, which has the key code of 35, you should always select the last tab. This actually won't work because we added active tab indicator span tag. So when we reach the last tab, there will be another next element sibling. There are many ways we could fix this, but I'll simply append active tab indicator on the tabs instead of tab header and add position relative to it instead and position tab indicator from the top 33 pixels for now and it should still work. And on here, I can use the tabs header height or the tab height itself to set the top property of the active tab indicator. With that, thanks for watching. Catch you next one. Bye-bye.